Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the features of a single and double circulatory system. You should then be able to describe the advantages of a double circulatory system compared to a single system. And finally, if you're following the OCR spec, you should be able to describe what's meant by a closed and an open circulatory system. In a previous video we saw that very small organisms, such as amoeba, have a very high surface area to volume ratio. Organisms with a high surface area to volume ratio can rely on diffusion for the exchange of molecules with their environment, for example oxygen. However, larger organisms have a much lower surface area to volume ratio, with the vast majority of cells a large distance from the surface of the organism. Also, larger organisms are often very active and have a high demand for oxygen for aerobic respiration. This means that larger organisms cannot rely on diffusion alone for the exchange of materials. Now we've already looked at how insects, fish and humans have specialised gas exchange systems. These ensure a very efficient exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. In the case of insects, their gas exchange system has evolved so that gases can diffuse directly to and from body cells. However, in fish and humans, gases dissolve in blood, which acts as a transport system. The blood then moves around the circulatory system, transferring gases between the cells and the gas exchange system. Blood also transfers other essential molecules, such as glucose and amino acids, and we'll be looking at blood in detail in a later video. Now, when molecules are carried in a transport medium, such as blood, through a circulatory system, scientists call this mass transport. I'm showing you here a simplified diagram of the circulatory system in fish. Deoxygenated blood is pumped by the heart through blood vessels to the gills. In the gills, the blood passes through narrow blood vessels called capillaries, and oxygen diffuses from the water into the blood. The oxygenated blood now passes from the gills through blood vessels to the body tissues. When it reaches the body tissues, the blood again passes through narrow capillaries, where oxygen diffuses from the blood to the cells that need it. And finally, the deoxygenated blood now returns in blood vessels back to the heart. So as you can see, the blood only passes through the heart once as it moves around the circulatory system. Scientists call this a single circulatory system. Now, there's a major problem with a single circulatory system. When the blood leaves the heart, the pressure of the blood is high and the blood is moving rapidly. However, as we've seen, the blood then passes through two sets of narrow capillaries, firstly in the gills and secondly as it passes the body tissues. Now, when blood passes through capillaries, the blood slows down and loses pressure. So this means that once the blood passes through the gills, the blood is moving relatively slowly and this limits how rapidly oxygen can be delivered to the body cells. I'm showing you here the circulatory system in mammals such as humans. Deoxygenated blood is pumped under high pressure from the heart to the lungs. In the lungs, the blood passes through narrow capillaries and oxygen diffuses from the air into the blood. Because the blood has passed through capillaries, it's now moving relatively slowly with lower pressure. However, now the oxygenated blood returns back to the heart which pumps the blood at high pressure around the body. As it passes through the body tissues, the blood passes through capillaries and oxygen diffuses to the body cells. The low pressure deoxygenated blood now makes its way back to the heart to be pumped again. So as you can see, in a double circulatory system, the blood passes through the heart twice. This ensures that the blood moves to the body tissues rapidly and under high pressure. And because of this, a double circulatory system can deliver oxygen more efficiently than a single circulatory system. Now we're going to look at the structure of the human heart in a later video. You'll see that the human heart has two completely separate sides, one with oxygenated blood and one with deoxygenated blood. And under normal conditions, these never mix. Okay, now if you're following the OCR spec, then you need to be able to describe what's meant by a closed and an open circulatory system. As we've seen, in both fish and in mammals, the blood is always contained in blood vessels as it travels to and from the heart. Scientists call this a closed circulatory system. In a closed circulatory system, the blood can move relatively rapidly, and the amount of blood passing to different organs can be controlled by constricting or dilating blood vessels. Now, insects, on the other hand, have an open circulatory system. Insects do not contain blood. Instead, Insects contain a fluid called haemolymph. 
Hemolymph carries nutrients such as sugars, but it does not carry oxygen. Hemolymph is pumped out of the insect's heart and passes directly into the body cavity, which is called the hemocele. Molecules are then transferred between the hemolymph and the body cells, and the hemolymph then makes its way back into the heart. Now, the key idea you need to understand is that the hemolymph is not carried in vessels, so this is an example of an open circulatory system. And because the hemolymph is not carried in vessels, it cannot move rapidly around the insect. Also, the insect cannot easily change the amount of hemolymph moving to different parts of its body. In the next video, we look at the structure of blood vessels in humans.